Hey everyone, if you're new here, my name is Jake, and today we're going to be looking at a coding boot camp from Rhythm School. As someone who went to a coding boot camp and graduated, went on to become a software engineer, I think it's interesting to come back and look at these other curriculums and see what's being taught now and offer some criticisms and things that I think that are they're doing really well, um, so that people who are interested in maybe attending one of these courses have another opinion. So. Uh, that being said, I have not met anybody from Rhythm School or any students, so take what I have to say with a grain of salt and form your own opinions. Uh, I'm simply reacting to the marketing material that I have access to via their website, which you can also access at rhythmschool.com. So today we are looking at their curriculum. Before I get into that, if you go to their program details, you can get a better understanding of how they run the program itself. Um, they do, it, it is uh, online, it looks like primarily online, but it is taught as a normal or as an in-person boot camp would be with um, lectures both in the morning and the afternoon. Looks like there is an hour and a half long lecture in the morning followed by an hour and a half long exercise. And then there is a two hour lecture followed by a three or two and a half hour exercise in the afternoon. So just something to think about. It is going to be online from what I can see. Um, if you are an in-person kind of learner, then that's something to take into consideration before you get farther into looking at this as an option for you. Okay, getting into their curriculum, you can visit that here. Um, it's split into five or six different sections. Um, it is a 16 week long program. So um, the first section is pre-work. This is a pretty common section among most boot camps. They'll have you complete some sort of small curriculum before you even arrive. So here they're asking you to learn the terminal, Git and GitHub, HTML and CSS, intermediate CSS and intermediate JavaScript part one. I think it's weird they called it intermediate JavaScript when there's no beginner JavaScript. So if we jump into the intermediate JavaScript uh, we're talking about debugging, data structures, higher order functions, the DOM, events, iterators. Where is the introductory JavaScript? Where are we taught about variables? Okay, so right away, I think that's a little odd. Um, there was no, there's an HTML and CSS beginning, and then it goes into intermediate CSS and bootstrap, but there's no beginning JavaScript. So not really sure what's going on here. So for the first week, one to two, of the 16 week program, we do intermediate front end development. After reviewing the pre-work, we dive into some more advanced JavaScript topics. You learn tools and techniques to more easily make your, to more easily make websites interactive and you'll start to establish problem solving strategies that will help you throughout your career. By the end of the two weeks, you'll be much better equipped to think like a developer. Okay, so this is where we get into intermediate JavaScript part two. Again, weird naming. I think that this should have been beginning JavaScript and even then it was missing some basic topics. So intermediate JavaScript part two talks about jQuery, something I've talked about before. You don't need to know how jQuery works. Um, this is cool. So this is HTTP REST, AJAX. Then we get to advanced JavaScript. This covers testing, um, okay, the, this keyword. So scope probably, and then object-oriented programming. I think maybe Object-oriented programming could get a little bit more of an overview, but perhaps it's reviewed later on again. So we'll just keep that in mind. And then we have advanced JavaScript part two. So Canvas, probably not really worth learning about. ES2015, that's fine. Managed async code. So, okay, promises, generators, async functions, uh, async JavaScript exercises. Might be also worth it to talk about observables. Regular expressions, also not really necessary. And then odds and ends. So functional programming, you don't really need that, but it looks like it's not covered by a lot. Design patterns is only mentioned here. Uh, and then anti-patterns, interesting. Okay, this feels like a very weird section, but um, most of this is pretty good, I guess, like minus the canvas. I'd say this the previous section was a lot stronger for JavaScript. So this is covered in weeks one and two. That's quite a bit to cover in two weeks, but all right. So then we get into full stack web dev. Once you understand how web browsers work, okay, and this is weeks three to five, I should say. So now we're going to server side programming. Over the next several weeks, you'll build web servers in Python, databases using PostgreSQL, and many full stack web apps using everything you've learned so far. You'll also learn about the basics of auth, web security, and web scraping. Okay, so here we get into some Python fundamentals. So 
Python history, okay, installation variable. See, this gets a proper introduction. Where was the JavaScript introduction? We missed that. Okay, then we talk about lists, dictionaries, functions, and debugging and modules. Okay, that's a great intro to Python. Then, okay, now we're talking about object-oriented programming with Python. Okay, cool. So yeah, we're getting a little bit more time on object-oriented just in the context of a different language. Again, I would prefer if it was a there was a more like general discussion of it, but getting exposed to it in different contexts will help you get a better general understanding. Okay, file IO, that's helpful. Generators, iterators, and decorators. All right, and then web scraping and server-side requests. Okay, I don't really understand why web scraping would be necessary to know, but okay. Okay, now we're getting to Python, SQL, and Flask. So introduction to Flask, um, which if I remember right, right, is like a web framework for uh, Python. Uh, I asked this before, but I wonder if Python people could help me here. If Django is more, more popular than Flask or the other way around. Because I, I hadn't heard of, I had heard of Flask only a couple times, but I've heard of Django quite a bit. Anyway, so then intro to SQL, intermediate SQL, SQL with Flask, and then API introduction. I'm glad that we're getting multiple sections on SQL here, because it's really important. And I'm also glad that there was not really a mention of no SQL. Um, so I appreciate that we're, we have a strong focus on SQL by itself. So that's great. So that was weeks three to five. Um, again, this feels like a lot of stuff to cover in three weeks, but better than, I guess, I guess JavaScript um, was two weeks and then Python and SQL was three weeks. Um, hopefully we revisit some of these topics. Okay, so week six to 10 is single page apps with React and Node.js. So after building a larger full stack app, you'll be ready to learn about more modern design patterns and frameworks. Over the next two weeks, you'll learn more about what single page apps and front end frameworks are, and you'll begin building your own using React JS using hooks. You'll learn more about React Router and TypeScript, which are both commonly used when building modern React apps, and you'll learn how to build an API using Node.js so that you can gain experience in multiple backend technologies. You'll also gain a fundamental understanding of deployment with AWS and learn more advanced patterns for state management in React. Okay, so again, full you know, full disclosure, I'm not a really big React person, so I'm just going to do my best to react to this. Ha. Okay, Node.js and NPM, good to know. Introduction to Express, uh, Node, SQL, and Express. What, what, what is the point of learning Express when we're learning Python and Flask? I don't, I think that this might be unnecessary. I've mentioned this before, but Express is kind of a weird choice. I mean, Python and Flask is, uh, you know, debatably just as weird to choose, but I think that the purpose of most boot camps use for choosing Express is because it also uses JavaScript. So you can learn JavaScript and understand the front end and the back end. But here we're learning Python. So we're learning Python as the back end language with Flask. Why are we learning Express.js as, as an alternate back end? Um, I feel like this is a waste of time. Either use the Python and Flask back end that we just learned or teach Express.js, but not both because uh, it's just it's wasting time that we could be using, uh, you know, learning other things. So not really happy with this Express JS here. Node, SQL, and Express. Um, okay, I mean, yeah, learning Node is fine though, and um, SQL. More more focus on SQL is good. More time on that. Again, Express. I'm not really not really understanding why. Intermediate Node and Express. Building, securing, and testing JSON APIs. Uh, I've spoken about this a lot of times. I, I think that just very, very simple level auth coverage is fine. So uh, yeah, like password hashing with bcrypt, authentication with JWTs, input validation with JSON schema, just maybe just a super cursory understanding of this, but that's fine. So preparing node APIs for production, production directory structure, node process managers, introduction to Heroku. See, okay, and then previously we mentioned AWS. So why are we learning AWS and Heroku? I really wish that we didn't spend so much time on deployment at all, because it's really not super necessary when you're beginning as a software engineer to have like some sort of deep understanding of cloud hosting, uh, you know, providers. So yeah, I'm not really sold on this. Also, what happened to the Python and Flask stuff? I feel like these sections are primarily talking about like productionizing node backends. So I'm a little confused here. Okay, other tech stacks with Node Express. Server-side templating with Pug. Why? Why would we do server-side templating with Pug if Pug if we just learned React? Um, that doesn't make sense. Lightweight storage with Redis. 
unnecessary. We, we learned SQL. You don't need to learn lightweight storage uh, unless it's necessary. You'll learn that on your job if you need to. Authentication with Passport Local, OAuth with Passport JS. Yeah, I think that this whole section here is a no-go. Yeah, here's the MongoDB, okay? That's a no. You don't need to know MongoDB or no SQL. If you have extra time and you just, everything is going well for you, you understand everything, you're done with all the material, then yeah, check out NoSQL, why not? It'd be cool, but um, this is not something I would focus on. Five real-time apps, mailers and scraping. So real-time applications with Socket.io. Yeah, I don't think this is necessary. This is getting into WebSockets, which just isn't really necessary to know. Uh, HTTP REST is fine. Sending email with node mailer, that's kind of cool, I guess, for fun, but not necessary. Web scraping, not necessary. Background jobs with Q, I don't know what that is. Now we get into React.js. So now we're jumping back to React after talking about like using Pug for server-side templating. Very, yeah, just a little, a little bizarre. So, um, but didn't we cover React previously? We didn't, uh, I apologize, I was confused. This is the single page act with React and Node.js, but for some reason we have two sections before it talking about how to use Express, which we don't need, and then it also mentioned using Pug. So just to clear that up. Uh, okay, so we have the basics of React, prop state, and component architecture, and then event forms. This is what I was expecting to see when I opened up the curriculum for this section. And then we have intermediate React and Redux. So yeah, so here's testing, the router, Redux, and full stack. Yeah, th this is the content. These last two were the content I was expecting. I don't know why we had any focus on Express.js. And most of the topics in here did not seem necessary because we just learned full stack web development with Python as the back end. Moving on, weeks 11 to 13, professional projects. Okay, having a real world experience is essential both for your own learning and your eventual job search because of this students at Rhythm spend nearly a month working on projects with different organizations in the Bay Area. You could be working on a large existing code base or building something brand new for external stakeholders. Okay, that's a no. Um, what you wanted to be working on a large existing code base is fine. Even then, I think a month long project in my personal opinion is kind of long. Like it's difficult to spend that much time on a project when you're brand new. Um, it would be a lot easier to just do a short project that if it did get derailed would um, end quickly. Anyway, that's that's my thought process on it. You're, you're paying money to go to this boot camp and be taught and study and spending a whole month of it, like basically working by yourself and having people check on you, I don't think is a very efficient way to learn. There, there needs to be studying going on at the same time as this. Okay, and then the last two weeks is computer science and interview prep. So before you start your job search, we'll help solidify your computer science knowledge. Um, yeah, so this is where they're gonna start teaching you data structures and algorithms. Uh, I don't think this is sufficient. For a 16 week program, I would like to see I mean, ideally, I would like to see two to three weeks of data structures and algorithms. And here they have two weeks, but I guarantee you that they're mixing it with other things. Yeah, so they talk about this is all data structures, big O notation. Uh, then they talk about resumes and probably working on applications. So it's really not going to be two full weeks on the data structures and algorithms. And ideally, you want this knowledge towards the beginning because your data structures and algorithms are integral to the way that you write your code. When it's the front end development or if it's the full stack or if it's the back end development, your data structures and algorithms are like kind of the foundation of your coding. So it, it's not good to just jam it in at the end. It's really something you should learn from the beginning and like absorb throughout the whole process. Um, so yeah, a little bit of criticism there on the timing and then not getting enough time I would like to see two to three full weeks spent on this um, and then continuing work on it throughout the whole boot camp. So that's my thoughts there. This is their curriculum. Um, I think I would say um, overall, um, I like that it's a it's a traditionally taught boot camp in the sense that there's lectures. Um, even though it is all online, I personally I went to an in-person boot camp and I think that that made a big difference. Um, I personally, I like to be, a, I'm a hands-on learner. So like, I like to see the code running on someone's computer. If I run into a problem, I want to go up and talk to the, to the teacher and ask them and show them my computer. And I mean, there is similar things you can do online with screen sharing and stuff, but personally, it's just, it's not the way that I learn the best. So 
I encourage you to think about the way that you learn the best um, and make that decision. But if you're okay with it being online, it is taught with you know these kind of this lecture style where you can you can ask questions and stuff, and I think that that's good. Um, as far as the curriculum itself, uh, I'm a little confused. I like the the gist of it is fine, but it feels like we're setting you up to have a React front end with a Python back end, and then we immediately get into a lot of express topics, which is a different backend. I think if you were to better use your time here, you would just remove all of this express content and either cover, cover Python better or um, spend more time on data structures. I feel like you're losing two to three weeks of time in this program that could be spent better, you know? So if I, if I, was, if I was someone coming into this program, I would make sure to not really pay attention to these express topics and spend more time focusing on learning React really well and combining it with that Python and Flask components that you were taught here. Or I mean, honestly, just pick one way or the other. I either run an Express backend, spend your time studying that and use React in the front or use Python in the back and um, React in the front, one or the other. But I don't, I don't, I see that if you split your time between those two, um, you're, you're duplicating some domain knowledge that doesn't need to be duplicated in a very finite time you have to study. So that's what I worry about. Um, aside from that, the rest of this looks pretty good. But yeah, that, that's pretty much all, all there is to it. So um, let me know if there's any other curriculums or boot camps you would like me to look at. Feel free to comment below with all of that and uh, subscribe if you want to see more. So thanks.